ask one of the imams. It's, it's up to you. We have to do this quickly. If asked, yes, sitting next to the girl. If he can, if not, we'll ask one of the imams. Josh? Josh? Public hearing number one regarding creating a special assessment district on a portion of Central Parkway. We have 13 items for original consideration and one for unanimous consent. If the clerk would please read item number one. Item number one for original consideration, an ordinance amending ordinance 224-03, creating a special assessment district on a portion of North College Street. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number two. Item number two for original consideration, a resolution calling for a public hearing for Restore New York Round 8 grant application for the properties located at 306 and 308 State Street. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number three. Item number three for original consideration, a resolution calling for a public, calling for a public hearing regarding addition of section 264-113 of this Connectedy City Code regarding the regulation and location of smoke shop, vape shop, hookah lounges, and vape consumption businesses. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number four. Item number four for original consideration. A resolution setting forth the attendance requirements and acknowledgement by members of the City of Schenectady Board of Assessment Review. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number five. Item number five for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the Department of Finance to make a budget amendment to the 2024 operating budget. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number six. Item number six for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the mayor to accept $800,000 crest grant from the dormitory authority of the state of New York. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number seven. Item number seven for original consideration. A resolution declaring the city council as the lead agency in opening a 30-day public comment period regarding the update of the Schenectady Historic Ordinance and related zoning ordinance sections. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number eight. Item number eight for original consideration, a resolution transmitting to the Schenectady County Planning Department proposed changes to the City of Schenectady Historic Commission <coughs> Ordinance and related historic district and zoning ordinances. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number nine. Item number nine for original consideration, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement for the Beavis Hill Re Reservoir residential unit. Roll call. Roll call by Ms. Patrick. Item number 10. Item number 10 for original consideration, a resolution authorizing the sale of 430 Hewlett Street for $78,000. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 11. Item number 11 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of 949 State Street for $80,000. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 12. Item number 12 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of a vacant lot located at 1055 Cutler Street and a vacant lot located at 1402 6th Avenue for a total of $3,500. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number 13. Item number 13 for original consideration, a resolution recognizing Pastor Parson for years of community service. This item will be taken out of order and presented by Council Member Farley. Item number 13A. Item 13A for unanimous consent, an ordinance creating a special assessment district on a portion of Central Parkway. I need a motion to place this on the consent agenda. Move by Mr. Mutavirin, second by Mr. Mr. Williams. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Is there any objection to this item? 
Just as no objection, um, this item will go on to the uh, its consent agenda. If there's nothing more to come before the City Council Caucus, I ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Ms. Patrick, second by Mr. Williams. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. I'd like to call the City Council meeting to order for Monday, April 8, 2024. And I'd like to call on Reverend Parsons to lead us in the prayer. I'd like to call on Council Member Mutavaren to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance Thank you. If the clerk would please complete the roll call. Mr. Toro. Mr. Farley? Here. Mr. Mancini? Here. Mr. Mutuveran? Present. Ms. Patrick? Here. Mr. Williams? Present. Ms. Porterfield? Here. Thank you. So before we do our first uh, resolution, I'll wait till you're finished. Before we do our first resolution, um, I want the, the young people have come. Um, the young people have come to present us with a song about Eid, and you're going to hear a little explanation about the holiday and what it's about. So at this point in time, I'd like to invite you inside the chamber. Honorable Mayor, Madam President, and members of the Council, thank you for giving us this opportunity to share our Eid joy with you. For the past four weeks, two billion Muslims from Alaska to Australia and from Sweden to South Africa have been fasting from dawn to sunset. On Wednesday, we will be celebrating and giving thanks to Allah for the countless blessings of Ramadan. The song we're about to sing for you is in both English and Arabic. The Arabic phrases are Eidun Sa'idun, a happy Eid, Yomun Farhan, a joyful day, Yomun Jamilun, a beautiful day, Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, Wa lillahi alhamd, and to Allah belongs all praise. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we will have our out of order resolution. It's a resolution recognizing Pastor Richard Parsons for years of community service. And I'd like to call on Councilmember Farley to present this resolution. May I have the floor, Madam President? You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Friends and family, please feel uh, welcome to come join. Sorry. Yeah, please. My man. You know it. Whereas Pastor Richard Parsons is dedicated pastor and community leader in the vibrant heart of the capital region of New York State, and Pastor Parsons a retiring pastor, and throughout his glorious pastoral legacy, Pastor Parsons devoted his life to serving others, leaving an incredible mark on the communities he touched. And as Pastor Parsons' journey into ministry began with a profound sense calling to serve, seeking and saving the lost, he embarked on his path, unwavering dedication, aspiring to make a difference in the lives of those around him. With a compassionate heart, a steadfast commitment to his faith, Pastor Parsons became an effective figure in the religious landscape of the capital region. And whereas Pastor Parsons Memorial Church in Schenectady, the church flourished and, and as it became a beacon of hope and a sanctuary for all those seeking refuge from life's challenges. Pastor Parsons' sermons resonated, as they did, with wisdom, compassion, and profound understanding of the human spirit, inspiring people to live lives of purpose and integrity. For 40 plus years, Pastor Parsons served as a pastor, providing spiritual guidance, support, food, clothing, and comfort to countless individuals, families, in need. His tenure as a clergy leader in the community is characterized by empathy, understanding, a, and a good, genuine desire to uplift those in need. And whereas affiliated with Refreshing Springs Church and State Street Presbyterian Church in Schenectady, Pastor Parson played a pivotal role in fostering a sense of belonging and unity in the community. His ministry exhibits inclusively a welcome to all those who sought freedom from addiction and physical spiritual nourishment. And whereas beyond the pulpit, beyond the pulpit, Pastor Parson was not merely a pastor who led from the pulpit, Pastor Parsons was actively involved in various initiatives advocating for social justice, food security, equality, and compassion. He played a critical part in the development of the Hamilton Hill Art Center, working closely to provide a platform for artistic expression and cultural enrichment in the community. Whereas Pastor Parsons went into the streets, drug houses, and bars to minister to those who are in dire need, embracing his faith and his teachings of compassion and service, he's a trailblazer he need in the community into his ministry. During his tenure at Refreshing Springs Church, he was the first to bring NAA meetings to the church, providing crucial support for those battling addiction. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Schenectady City Council and Mayor, and Mayor Gary R. McCarthy do hereby pause in their deliberations to recognize Pastor Richard Parsons for his years of service to the city of Schenectady and to congratulate him and wish him well on his retirement. Mr. Farley, Mr. Farley, can I move the resolution? Okay, I'd uh, like to entertain a motion. You, you, you're moving the resolution? Yes. I need a second, please. Second by Mr. Moodbury. All those in favor? Uh, motion passes. Now Congratulations. Motion passes. I'm truly blessed to be here today. I'm going to speak to you and I pray that it will continue to be within your hearts and your minds. Just a simple thing. We are better together. Thank you, Pastor Parsons. 
Thank you. Thank you for all your years of service. Yes, please. Yes, I'd love to get a picture. Usually I can talk, but when, when, when it's you, it's a big deal. You got me nervous. Thank you again, Reverend Parson, for your years of service. We have one public hearing this evening. I'd just like to remind everyone that the public hearing comment is extended to four minutes, and also ask that you respectively, respective, respectively um, ask that every person only comment on the subject relevant to the public hearing. Public hearing number one, regarding creating a special assessment district on a portion of Central Parkway. I have three people signed up to, four people signed up to speak. Okay, uh, Sohib Shakima, are you here? You're not here for this public hearing? Okay. Ashar Atta? No. Okay. Rod Huber? Are you here to speak about the Central Parkway? Sidewalk program? Okay, sir, we will move you to the city business. This is about the public hearing. Okay, thank you. Latanya Lee. Good evening, everyone. President Porterfield and city council members. I am here as a longtime resident of Eastern Parkway and Central Parkway. I initiated a petition in 2020 in the midst of COVID. Our sidewalks have been crumbling. Um, it initially started out as something personal for me, but then led to something bigger. Our, we are a throughway to Central Parkway and the Rose Garden. And so I took the initiative to go out and petition our neighbors and I got 75% of the uh, numbers that I needed to create this, hopefully this assessment, if this happens. And I'm thrilled. Um, it's been a long journey. I have to say thank you to John, who has been with me the whole time, and all the neighbors who signed the petition um, it's a beautiful area. I've been living in my home since 1997, raised all of my children, and I have three grandchildren. And it's a beautiful area, and the sidewalks are in dire need. I know that this is a hardship for some, but for me, I mean, I, I divorced in 2005, so it would be a hardship for me too, um, but I think it's the best thing uh, for the area, and I am a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur, 30 years. I own two businesses. I own Tots, Teddies, and More, which is a family daycare. I've been serving the community since 1993. I believe in what I do, and I'm hopeful that everyone is in agreement, and we're gonna have these beautiful sidewalks, and people are gonna be proud, and no one's gonna get hurt. Um, uh, walking down our, our street, um, and I'm, all I have to say is I'm, I'm grateful and I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity, and I hope that you will consider and everyone will um, know that this is, this is a good thing and it's not something that is meant to hinder anyone, and hopefully, you know, it will, you know, it will come to fruition. And I, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yep. No Steve Dorfman. Good evening. My name is Steve Dorfman. I reside at 811 Central Parkway. Um, from the proposals for the parking, I'm totally against it. They want to remove my bushes. They want to set back uh, approximately two to three feet into my property. 
uh, for four parking spaces. Um, my my wife is you know is has mental and physical problems, and this is a stress on her. Besides that, the people that complained about parking on the street, okay, got tickets because they were parked on the sidewalk. It doesn't affect their property, but it affects mine. My next door neighbor, Matt Nelligan, uh, he sent in a, uh, a statement stating that he was opposed to the project. We're not opposed to the parking. Uh, no, not the parking, let me correct myself. We're not opposed to the sidewalks. We're opposed to parking where they're penalizing me as a resident for 38 years. Okay, everybody on the block has parking in the back uh, in the alleyway, so they can park their cars in the alleyway. Now, personally, I believe it's, if, if they're so enthused about having parking on the street, they could take a couple of feet away from, from the island, which would give them more parking, because they, from what I understand, they didn't want to take away their, their shrubs and their, and, and their trees and so on and so forth. So I'm totally opposed to it, and, and I wish, instead of penalizing me, that they, if they want to help people on, on the block as far as parking, which they don't need, because it, like I, uh, to be redundant, they can park in the back. They all have garages. So that, that's, that's how I feel. I got a statement here, if you, if you would like me to submit it. I, I sent it to the, uh, uh, the city clerk's office, and I sent it to uh, the, uh, uh, the people that would, that part of the project. So like, uh, again, I'm not opposed to the sidewalks. I'm opposed to them uh, penalizing me for people because they, a couple of people got uh, tickets because they were parked on the sidewalk. I thank you for your time. Thank you. I have no one else signed up to speak, so I declare the public hearing closed. As for approval of the minutes for March, minutes for March 24th, 2024. So moved. moved by Mr. Mudebaron, second by Mr. Mancini. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ask the clerk to please read any communications and petitions. Communications presented to the City Council for Monday, April 8th, 2024. Under official, there were none. Under general, from Nils Headland of American Legion Post 1485, a letter dated March 18, 2024, thanking the City of Schenectady for donated funds. From Warren Monkdahl, an email in response to the YouTuber that videotaped City Hall and employees with advice regarding the situation. From Richard Head, an email with advice and case law against videotaping public officials at work. From Dollar Tenpin OA, an email slandering the mayor for not allowing any, an individual to record employees. From Dave Connolly and Michael Murphy, an email with additional suggestions for the Central Parkway sidewalk improvements. From Steve and Ingrid Dorfman, an email regarding their displeasure with the new plan for Central Parkway sidewalk program. They would rather not have parking directly in front of their home and offered alternative plans such as making the island smaller. From Peter Fine, an email regarding the Central Parkway sidewalk program. He does not like the parking. does not like losing four to five feet of their front lawn. He has plowing concerns and suggested making an island, the island smaller. From Matt Nelligan and Jacqueline Mouser, an email regarding the Central Parkway sidewalk program. He and his wife did not sign up for the program and would like all repairs to be completed by utilizing grants since the street is a gateway to Central Park and will be used by many residents. From Jean Carney, an email stating her opposition regarding Central Park sidewalk program assessment and lack of communication regarding it. And under petitions, there was a petition turned in at the last city council meeting with 971 signatures requesting a resolution for an immediate ceasefire to end civilian bloodshed and ensure humanita humanitarian aid access to Gaza. Thank you. I'd ask the clerk to, uh, excuse me, I'd ask city council members to any committee reports. 
committee reports? Seeing none, at this point in time we have the privilege of the floor related to the legislative agenda. I have no one signed up to speak, so I declare the public comment on the legislative agenda closed. Ask council members for approval of the legislative consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Moody and second by Mr. Farley. All those in favor? Aye. We do have one item for a roll call vote. Item number nine for original consideration, a resolution <coughs> authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement for the Beavis Hill Reservoir residential units. I need a motion. Moved by Mr. Williams. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Mancini. Is there any discussion on this item? Discussion on this item. Okay, if the clerk would please call the roll. Mr. Toro. No. Mr. Farley? Yes. Mr. Mancini? Yes. Mr. McDevaron? Yes. Ms. Patrick? I'm voting no. Um, I think that, uh, as I've stated at the committee meetings and discussions about this item, um, I think that um, changing the, the outline of what we have had this um, employee um, in the middle of his employment um, is is not really right. Um, this was, you know, part, he, he does a lot um, on the property to maintain the property. I think it would be more expensive to hire a caretaker for the property, so I am voting no. Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Porterfield? Yes. Motion passes five to two. This time we'll have privilege of the floor regarding general city business. I have a number of people signed up. I have 23 people signed up to speak. The first person, and I'm going to, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, when you come to the rail, please um, pronounce your name for us. And, and I just want to remind everyone that this portion of the um, privilege of the floor is only three minutes. Three minutes, and you, will, you are being timed. So, the first person I have signed up is Ty Moore Aji, Naji. Good evening, thank you for your time. My name is Thaymor Naki. I am a longtime resident of the Capital District, born and raised. I'm currently the Vice President of Al Hidayah Center in Latham. We are the largest mosque in the greater Capital District. I am here to support some of my colleagues who have come before you previously, calling for the City Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. You may be wondering why we are so adamant to have a local political entity pass a resolution that ultimately will not have a meaningful effect on American foreign policy. At the end of the day, local politicians don't control American foreign policy. The reason why we are here and the reason why we have gone before other local entities, including the Albany City Common Council and the Albany County Legislature, is because as we've seen throughout American history, through different struggles, whether through the civil rights era, whether through the fight for women's voting rights, symbolic gestures, symbolic actions can have a profound impact on a controversy or issue. And in turn, it can have a profound impact on the perception of a controversy or issue by the public. Currently, we are six months into what can only be described per UN regulations as a genocide occurring in Gaza. According to statistics right now, as of today, 33,000 people have been killed. More than 13,000 children are among them, and that also includes 8,400 women. 75,000 Palestinians have been injured, and 8,000 have been missing. Thanks to social media, we are seeing horrific images coming out of Gaza, including <coughs> excuse me, the bombing of hospitals, <clears throat> the bombing of hospitals, the bombing of refugee centers, attacks on aid workers, the blockade of a humanitarian aid for people in need, 
the list of atrocities goes on and on and on. And what we are asking you to do, essentially, is be on the right side of history. Because 20, 30, 40 years from now, the history books will be talking about this conflict. And the question before you, the question you have to ask yourself as human beings, is did you stand on the right side of history, even though you yourself could not ultimately change the conditions on the ground? Did you do your part as leaders of the community to voice your support or opposition to a genocide? We certainly hope and pray that you are opposed to the genocide in your hearts and in your minds. But the way that you can show the general public that you are opposed to it is through your powers as city legislatures, through your powers to pass resolutions, because ultimately those resolutions will have a profound effect. Ultimately, voting no on the ballot, which occurred very recently in our uh, Democratic primaries, has a profound impact on perception. And so that, that is why I'm here as a local member of the Muslim community, as a member of the Muslim community leadership in the Capital District. I hope and pray that our message hits a tone with you and that you would consider sincerely and pass a resolution calling for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. William Nichman. Thank you. Uh, my name is William Neckman. I live on Parkwood Boulevard in Schenectady. In October of last year, the League of Women Voters submitted my name to the mayor to be their representative on the Civilian Police Review Board. The mayor has not forwarded that recommendation to the council for confirmation as required by law. The Civilian Police Review Board was created in 2002 as an independent body to provide civilian oversight of internal police complaint procedures and investigations and to help improve relationships between civilians and the police. In the two decades since, we've witnessed a growing professionalization of our police force. However, it's the nature of police work that there will inevitably be conflicts between civilians and police, and some conflicts will result in accusations, justified or not, of police misconduct. The board is not a body of the city council or the mayor's office. In fact, the city council only directly appoints one member. All other members are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council from candidates recommended by a defined list of civic organizations, including the NAACP, the Human Rights Commission, the Schenectady United Neighborhoods Association, Schenectady Inner City Ministries, the Schenectady Municipal Housing Authority, the City Council itself has one appointee, and the League of Women Voters. By specifying these community organizations, the City Council, by code, made sure that the board would represent a cross-section of city communities. The mayor is required by law to appoint members from recommendations made by the organizations named in the code. He has no discretion. This is not the mayor's body, nor is it the council's. It is the city's body. It is a body that usually works in the background. Inevitably, though, there will be an incident that will result in accusations of police misconduct. While the, civil while the Civilian Police Review Board does not have the power to directly discipline police officers, it does have the ability to review internal police procedures and make recommendations. This is a valuable check on the police, as well as a way to assure the public that police internal review procedures are undertaken properly. The League of Women Voters is represented on the board by Julia Holcomb, whose term expired last June. In accordance with the city code, in October of 2023, the League re recommended me, a member of the League, to be Julia's replacement. In November, the mayor's office asked me for a resume, which I promptly submitted. To date, the mayor has not forwarded the recommendation to the council for confirmation, with no explanation to the league or to the council. Again, the mayor must appoint representatives from among the names submitted by the organizations named in the legislation. His office has been contacted numerous times by the league and has not even provided the courtesy of a response. This body usually works in the background and provides an essential service to the city. Its members receive no compensation and do it as a civic duty. So we ask why the mayor has not followed the law and forwarded the league's recommendation to the city council. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Hatke.
Thank you. Uh, my name is Annie Hatke. I'm the uh, president of the League of Women Voters of Schenectady County. I'm here just to second the words of Bill Neckerman. Um, we have been on the uh, Civilian Police Review Board uh, for many, many years. We've had a chair on this board um, for several years, and we would like to see our, uh, our nominee appointed as soon as possible. We don't take this lightly. Um, this is an important position in the community and we have chosen our nominee very carefully. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Cheryl Neckerman. I live on Parkwood Boulevard. I've been on the board for the League of Women Voters for 14 years. And usually our challenge is finding someone who wants to serve on the Civilian Police Review Board. But we found a, a nominee, and we are just mystified as to why the mayor has not sent that uh, uh, appointment to the city council. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed that the mayor is not here tonight, but really, if there's an issue, we'd like to know what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Chikema. I wanted to start by thanking you for allowing our Muslim kids sing the joyful Eid song. I assure you that the children of Gaza are spending the saddest Eid in their lives while more than 13,000 of them don't get to celebrate it simply because they were killed during the genocide. It breaks my heart that we are back here asking you to add your voices to those, to those who are standing against genocide, while you are still insisting on including those who are championing genocide. Between the time we were here two weeks ago and now, many lives were taken away by the IDF, including that of a US aid worker along with six of his colleagues. I ask this question, would we sit a Ukrainian and a Putin supporter and have them discuss the war before we call for a ceasefire? Let it be said on record that we have done our due diligence by emailing you links to educate you about the reality on the ground of the US taxpayers funded genocide of Palestinians by the Israeli occupation forces. This genocide is funded by each and every working adult in this room. Are you comfortable funding a genocide? For the African Americans here, did you forget our history in this country? We all know that slavery is not part of the history of this country simply because we know it has not ended, it evolved. For the Irish Americans here who are not disconnected from their history, you know the genocide and man-made famine is a generational trauma that is still felt till this day. The Italians, Chinese, Japanese, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, and the list goes on. Do you know why did each group suffer and why many continue to suffer till this day? It is because of the attitude that most have, the attitude of, it ain't my problem. The suffering and genocide of the Palestinians is a mere reflection of our own state. Our lack of bravery tells me that you don't have my back as an American citizen. Your subjectivity on this simple issue of human rights is a reminder for our system or a reminder of our system of supremacy. Your silence is a deafening betrayal of the values we hold dear to our hearts. If you choose to do nothing, your names will go down in history on the opposite side of those who believe and fight for freedom. It's not too late to add your names next to Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and others like the US Airman Aaron Bushnell, who died refusing to be complicit with our government's direct participation in the genocide, and Jacob Flingren, a US citizen who was killed in Gaza while feeding the starving Palestinian men, women, and children who are being starved to death by the IDF. 
Jacob and six other aid workers were killed while you were being sensitive to the feelings of those who believe the genocide should continue. Last time, we asked you to follow the lead of Albany City Council, but today, we are asking you to follow the lead of you Albany Student Senate in passing the resolution. Adopt, bring to the floor, and pass the ceasefire resolution now. Thank you. Thank you. Ashar Atta. Good evening. I actually put my name there twice. One was I was registering for Dr. Insaf, and it, you called my name earlier. Yes, that was for the public hearing, but you so, said no. Uh, no, because, yeah, so I chose the wrong options. It was two entries. I'm just letting you know. One is me. The other is Dr. Insaf, who's sitting here. So can I ask her to speak? She is already on the sheet, sir. Oh, she's there. That's good. That's okay, so I'm going to start your time because we were having a little conversation. For okay, you. thank you very much. So good evening again, and um, just to bring up an issue that, uh, as Dr. Chakima said, that we are requesting this council to take up the resolution for ceasefire in Gaza and occupied Palestine by the occupying apartheid regime of Israel. These are not my words when I'm calling them apartheid, because this is what lots of uh, humanitarian organizations across the world are saying. Uh, we are also being told that the council wants to hear both sides. So there are no both sides in an occupied and occupying situation. When you one, for one part of the people are occupied and the other is the occupier, there is no both sides. And by the way, there were no those both sides in slavery and the enslavement of the black people. There were no both sides in the occupation of the Indian lands. There were no both sides in the British colonization of the subcontinent. And there were no both sides in apartheid in South Africa. We all know that. There were no both sides, although the, the, the occupying forces, they always made the case that the others deserved it, they, that there was always a reason for that discrimination, for that occupation, for the genocide, and so on. The other case that's often been made or that's been asked of us, what would a city council, how, why would it matter? How would a local city council matter? All, like I said, like I said that all um, issues are global. So I'll give you an example. I'll read something. I hope it doesn't take a lot of time. It's a news article. It talks about Joseph Zuma, 71. He was formally indicted in a couple of weeks after October 7th on three counts of first degree murder, one count of attempted murder, two counts of aggravated battery, and two counts of hate crime. He pleaded not guilty at his arraignment. However, the prosecutors have said that Zuba, this is what he was accused of. He stabbed a six-year-old Wadi Al-Fayumi 26 times. 26 times. A six-year-old was stabbed 26 times. And here's why. And his mother, a 32-year-old Hanan Shaheen, was stabbed more than a dozen times because of their religion and nationality. Wadi was laid to rest and his mother remained in hospital and could not participate in his son's burial. But investigators determined that the victims were targeted, I quote, were targeted by the suspect due to them being Muslim and the ongoing Middle Eastern conflict involving Hamas and the Israelis. This, is, this happened in Chicago. So this is the realities we live in. Our cities are, are, we, uh, are occupied, are, uh, composed of all kinds of people, and we do get affected by what happens overseas. And this is the reason we are requesting you to pass this resolution. So now let's quickly talk about who is being bombarded and, and indiscriminately killed in Palestine. It is, it is being done by an apartheid state and occupied. It is done on people who are occupied for three generations, for three generations. This is not a recent conflict. It does not start on October 7th. This has been inflicted on people who have been occupied for more than three generations. Right now, 84% of the health facilities are damaged. Water and sanitation system has collapsed. 100% of education system has collapsed. And millions of people are without home. And 75% of the population is displaced while they are being told that they actually deserve it. They actually deserve it. Sir, your time is up, and I just wanted to let you get, finish that statement, but your time has expired. 
So uh, I think I have made my case. I thank you very much for the time for allowing me the time. Thank well, you. Jamaica Miles. Schenectady Mayor, though not here this evening, and City Council, please join the national and international community in its pleas for a permanent ceasefire, release of all hostages, those held by Israel and Hamas, an end to U.S. weapons being shipped to Israel, and the immediate and unencumbered access to humanitarian aid so desperately needed. We stand here on colonized land. This land is colonized land. The blood still seeps into the ground here from enslaved Africans and the genocide of indigenous people on this land. Two weeks ago, one day after the last city council meeting, there was a report of the special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Palestinian territories occupied since 1967 by Francesca Albanese to the UN Human Rights Council. It is titled, Anatomy of a Genocide, and I quote, after five months of military occupation, Israel has destroyed Gaza. Over 30,000 Palestinians have been killed, including more than 13,000 children. Over 12,000 12, are presumed dead and 71,000 injured, many with life-changing mutilations. 70% of residential areas have been destroyed. 80% of the whole population has been forcibly displaced. Thousands of families have lost loved ones or have been wiped out. Many could not bury or mourn their relatives, forced instead to leave their bodies decomposing in homes, in the street, or under the rubble. Thousands have been detained and systematically subjected to inhumane and degrading treatment. The incalculable collective trauma will be experienced for generations to come. By analyzing the patterns of violence in Israel's policies on its onslaught in Gaza, this report concludes that there are reasonable grounds to believe that the threshold indicating Israel's commission of genocide is met. The overwhelming nature and scale of Israel's assault on Gaza and the destruction, destructive conditions of life it has inflicted reveal an intent to physically destroy Palestinians as a group. This report finds that there are reasonable grounds to believe that the threshold indicating the commission of the following acts of genocide against Palestinians in Gaza has been met. Killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to groups, members, and deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Genocidal acts were approved and given effect following statements of genocidal intent issued by senior military and government officials, end quote. Every single day, every minute while we stand here, people are being murdered and starved to death as an ongoing attack, an act of genocide which can be stopped. The hostages could be returned immediately if Israel agreed to a ceasefire and return of their hostages. The federal government moved as little as it did because they were forced to move. The majority of U.S. citizens support this. The pressure from everywhere is still needed. An important message is not just for the international community, but to the Schenectady residents that all life is valuable and no one gets to build their homes on the bones of the children that they murdered. Thank you. Thank you. Fatima Isat. Madam President and members of the council, I am a proud resident of the city of Schenectady and I'm here to support the ceasefire resolution. In the late 18th century, my grandparents moved from colonized India to colonized Africa, and now here I am in colonized North America. How many more times do we have to move from continent to continent, only to keep witnessing people stealing land from others, oppressing them, tormenting them, dehumanizing them and killing them in the thousands. Madam President, members of the council, at present there is a full-blown genocide taking place in Gaza. To fully appreciate what is going on there, I quote Israeli writer Elon Mizrahi. 
The genocide has seen innumerable atrocities and massacres. But what happened at Ashifa Hospital in Gaza deserves a study, a university course, and a Wikipedia page of its own. I have never seen anything like this, ever. I don't think even ISIS accomplished anything like this. This looks like the work of death squads high on drugs on a long orgy, armed with 21st century weapons. It is so insane, we cannot even understand what it means yet. And it will take us years to grasp that particular episode in the genocide. I have no idea what Israel did to the soldiers to prepare them for this, but it just doesn't look possible that normal humans, even the most hateful, can perform this. And it went on for three weeks. I am at a loss for an explanation. Even in the context of the utter depravity we've witnessed, this stands out as extremely, extremely sinister. My God, we have sunk so low. End of quote. City of Schenectady, let us make our children proud. Let them look back at Schenectady City Council one day and say, when world leaders and politicians decided to look the other way, when over 30,000 people in Gaza were killed with our tax dollars, our city was one of the first in New York State to call for a ceasefire. We did not wait until we had no choice but to admit that war crimes were being committed, that ethnic cleansing was taking place, that colonizers controlled the world. We, the people of Schenectady, had the courage and the moral conviction to stand with people whose land has been stolen, who are imprisoned indefinitely and without trial, who are being starved to death, and whose limbs are being amputated without anesthesia. Thank you. Thank you. Ed Laban, Jr. Good evening. Last meeting, I left proof of my allegations that two corrupt judges committed the crime of conspiracy to deprive me of my constitutional rights. Yet again, none of you have contacted me. Mayor is chief law enforcement officer in Schenectady. Council members are supposed to help taxpaying citizens. You are all part of the conspiracy now, and all of you have committed obstruction of governmental administration. If convicted, none of you can hold office again. The mayor, as an executive, if prosecuted, I believe it's a mandatory sentence. Now that Sean Ray's of YouTube, Long Island, audit has been falsely arrested by the mayor's nonsense executive order, I believe 500,000 people will know all your names soon. By the end of the month, I would say. You keeping my ethics complaints out of the Gazette, and that's for the mayor who's not here, and off the news channels doesn't much matter, except to prove you were covering up for Frost and Falatico. Long Island Audit has more viewers than the TV news, and a Gazette will only print what you tell them to print. As I said before, 10 million people will know your name and how corrupt you are. That includes the city police chief, the sheriff, the judges, county attorney, the district attorney, and United States Attorney Barnett. I have clear proof of these crimes. You've done nothing. You've done nothing for the pensioners of St. Clair's. What the hell did you run for? You've done nothing for the Humphrey family. You all belong in jail. Thank you. Michael Zafiri. President, Ms. Porterfield, City Council, good evening. My name is Mike Superior, 21. I'm your property owner, Schenectady. Hope you're having a good evening. The one, two issues I want to talk about. One, um, two years ago, December of 2022, I was honored to do um, two plaque present presentations. One for the Schenectady Police Department, the other one for the Rotterdam Police Department. Um, to this day, I want to tell you how much I honor, we honor them and we respect them and love them. Um, an officer recently, I think it was about a week and a half ago, Long Island, Brooklyn, New York, 
Jonathan Diller, was tragically killed. The person who killed him, who shot him, had 21 arrests. Something needs to change in this state regarding these police officers. Any kind of law enforcement, every day they go out there and they put their lives on the line. It's time we put our lives on the line for them and we respect them and give them the protection they need. Um, every day they leave their homes and I have relatives in the police department, Schenectady, Rotterdam, friends. Every time they walk out that door, they say, they say goodbye to their wives and their loved ones. They don't know if they're coming home but they put their lives on the line every day. And God, I respect them, I pray for them every day. And I hope everybody here does the same thing. And I wanted to honor them and think of Jonathan Diller and his, and his wife, Stephanie, and their family, and all the officers out there. Bless them every day. And my closing note is, I want to respond to four city three city council persons and Mrs. Porterfield, Mr. Williams, Ms. Patrick, Mr. Toro, Ms. Porterfield. Every time I call you or text you, you always come back to me, you always get stuff done. I want you to know that, and I respect that. I'm fed up with the rhetoric of how you people get trashed. Enough is enough. They say you people don't do things, you do. And I know you do, and people out there know you do. So it needs to stop. People know who they are out there, just stop. We respect you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me talk. Thank you. Mabel Leon. My name is Mabel Leon, and I come before you tonight to ask your support for a resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to weapon sales to Israel. All over the United States, resolutions are being supported and adopted by local councils to bring awareness and support for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, an immediate delivery of humanitarian aid and a return of the hostages. You may ask, why am I coming before city council, a local government entity, and bringing before you an international issue? Uh, in a democracy, when our national government does not listen to the citizens who are crying for justice and humanity, we must use every peaceful strategy to change that government policy. A democracy demands action from its citizens and all government bodies. I will not be silent. And I hope you, as my governing body, will not be silent either. I stand before you to proclaim in a loud voice that I am not a supporter of Hamas, that I was horrified by the Hamas attack on Israeli civilians. And I will tell you, criticizing the government of Israel does not make me an anti-Semite. Today, as of today, 33,175 people in Gaza have been killed, with the majority being children and women. A hundred journalists have been killed, 200 humanitarian workers, and we can add the seven from uh, the central kitchen. Every hour in Gaza, 15 people are killed and six are children. 35 are injured every hour and 42 bombs fall on them. The camps that they've been forced from in their homes to live in are overcrowded. Water is scarce and unclean. Toilets are non-existent or unsanitary. Severe injuries are untreated and disease is rampant. And now famine has set in and there are deaths due to starvation. We all know this. It is on our TVs, it is on our phones, it is in our newspapers. This is an elimination of a people, the Palestinian people. Anyone who believes in human rights would demand an end to this madness. Permanent ceasefire 
open all routes for humanitarian aid, return the hostages, and work for a resolution for the Palestinians and for the Israelis. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Sandals. Oh, Robert Sanders. Mr. Robert Sanders. Sanders. <laughs> yes, I can see who you are now. Good evening. How are you? Um, I want, just want to talk to you on two of the um, original consideration things. One was about the vape shops, smoke shops, and things to that nature. To make it very quick, I hope every store to Cumberland Farms isn't going to be selling cigarettes either because the vape and cigars are legal products. And the last I knew, we followed the Constitution of the United States of America. Okay? Uh, as for the stockade and the historical district, I was on the zoning board for eight years, 92 to 2000. Okay? That's a special area by the Dutch, okay, that was settled by the Dutch. You know the history. I don't have to tell you about Schenectady. But there shouldn't be any changing to build new buildings and destroy the history of the city of Schenectady. Um, let me just go on a little bit. Uh, I don't think we should be giving aid to Ukraine, Russia, um, Gaza, Palestine, or Israel. Okay? There, there's a thing that every politician knows. All politics is local. It was like the little child who died over on 12th Street. Okay? I came across, I said to this council, we need something for children and families in this city. No one paid any attention to me. Councilman Member Mood of Aaron said, I tried to get it on the agenda. No one listened. We have a dead child now. Lord knows how that's going to come out. What's happening 7,000 miles away has nothing to do with the United States. Okay, we got veterans. We got homeless people. We got drugs coming across the Mexican border. We have big time issues, but this is the city of Schenectady. You are elected by the people of the city of Schenectady. That's what you swore to, the constitution of the city of Schenectady and the state of New York. Okay, that's where your due diligence lies. Okay, now I totally understand how these people feel, because how, how I feel. All these tax dollars going to Ukraine, to Russia, to Israel, here and there. Why don't we get them? Why aren't we getting those dollars? I got it. I understand it. But this is the United States. We got to take care of our own house first. What's the old saying? A house of cards will not stand. Something like that. That's where we're at. Everybody's picking a box. I'm black. I'm Indian. I'm white. You know, I'm Muslim. I'm this. I'm that. Okay. No, no, no. We're Americans. We're Americans here. I understand. Irish, German, okay. There's people from African descent. There's people from all over. But right here, this is the city of Schenectady. This is what the city of Schenectady is all about, okay? So we address those situations, those problems first, then move on if we can move on. There's a, there's a person too, Madam President. I'm going to end it right here. His name is Congressman Paul Tonko. Call him. Talk to him, okay? We, we have state senators, people like that. Talk to them. The city of Schenectady is the city of Schenectady. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Baza Hakimi. And please correct me, your name for me. I'm sure I didn't get that right. Sure. <clears throat> uh, hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Baza Hakimi and I'm one of the Muslim community members. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I would like to start uh, with the holy verses of the Holy Quran, uh, which says in Arabic, Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuha nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qabaila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqakum inna allahu alimun khabir. So the translation would be, uh, <clears throat> O mankind, indeed, we have created you from a male and female and made you nations and tribes that you may know each other. Indeed, uh, the best of you in the sight of God is the, the one who most regards God. So we are all here for the uh, ceasefire resolution. In this hall, we are gathered from different nations and different backgrounds 
but mostly we are residents of Schenectady uh, City. Uh, everyone is united here for a very valid and important cause, that is the ceasefire. As every day, we see a lot of innocent people, including uh, men and women and children who are dying uh, in Palestine. This oppression and injustice should be end as soon as possible. If we are supposed to be in such conditions, just if we imagine ourselves in, in that conditions, imagine how we would seek justice for ourselves. The same we seek justice for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I would say that you shouldn't be belonging to any particular religion to stand for this important cause, but as a human being and living in a free democratic world, this is a cause which is very important and uh, must be present to everybody. And this is to bring peace and stability to those oppressed people on the other side of the world. Uh, this resolution should be passed as soon as possible. Thank you for your attention and for having me here. Thank you. Thank you. Saeed Ahmad Noor. Respected brothers and sisters, uh, I greet you all with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This means uh, peace be upon you all. Uh, my name is Said Ahmad Noor. I am resident of Schenectady City. I am here to support a ceasefire resolution for Palestine today. Uh, one of the heartbreaking events on social media I saw was uh, the children's clothes were put, to, put side by side uh, by the numbers of thousands uh, children killed and it was picturized by a drone and the scene was in miles. The question here is how many more children have to be murdered to seize uh, the fire? Although in Quran, Chapter 5, verse 32, Allah says that whoever kills in innocent human beings, it means that he has killed the whole humanity. And whoever saves a life of a human being, he saves the whole humanity. So Allah here in this verse mentions human beings not a specific group of peoples or religion. So what we believe is that each innocent soul being killed is that like the humanity is being killed. Again, the question is how many times the humanity has to be killed to reach to the point to seize the fire. Uh, let's put ourselves in the shoes of Palestine people. What if we were the family member of those innocent people killed? Will we still be, will we still not stop the ceasefire and support the ceasefire resolution. And at the end, I would like to mention uh, the speech of uh, our president when he was not elected by that time. He, he repeated uh, a, a hadith, the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the Prophet said, stop the wrong with your hands. If you cannot stop it with your tongue, and if you cannot do that, then hate it in your heart. So I again request you all to please join me in the ceasefire resolution for Palestinians. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.
Frank Wicks. You know, those are all hard speakers to follow, but one point to make is, along with the ceasefire, uh, we're, we're, we're using our tax money to send weapons to Israel, and uh, Israel tells us we can't tell them what to do with them. So the way to cut it off is to stop using our tax money to send the weapons. Uh, the, the historians of the Holocaust are comparing Israel today with Germany in the 1930s. What are the similarities? The Nazis and Israel claim to have be special people based on their birthright. If you, if you don't have the right birthright, you don't matter. Uh, Nazis then and Israel, Israelis now are committing genocide and ethnic cleansing to get rid of the others. Israel, Israeli leader, shows a triumphant map with only Israel between the river and the sea. In other words, there's no such thing as Palestinians. Uh, illegal settlements in the West Bank by Israel are terrorizing and uh, killing the Palestinians for many years. On uh, Christmas Eve, Israelis attack the birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem didn't get much attention, but it should. Uh, Israelis attack, Israeli continues to kill and cripple thousands of Palestinian babies, children, women, innocents in Gaza. Israel is also committing genocide by starvation of Palestinians in Gaza. Israel is also, Israel continues to kill hundreds of uh, humanitar uh, humanitarian work aid workers, uh, members of the press, and doctors in Gaza. Uh, Israel, in the past, uh, encouraged the United States to start a war in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan, a 20-year war, and also the war in Iraq with regime change. Uh, now they're trying to get uh, the United States uh, started a war with Iran, and uh, that has to be resisted. Uh, and again, this could not happen without our weapons. The president can stop the can 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 stop it by stopping the weapons any, any day now. He could have from the start. And Israelis' best hope for survival is they actually to make make peace with the neighbors rather than using our weapons for a continual war. And this is what Albert Einstein had in mind when he encouraged the creation of Israel back in the 1940s. Thank you. Thank you. Ed Varno. Good evening, my name is Ed Varno. I'm the newly elected treasurer of the City of Schenectady GOP. Tonight on behalf of all our constituents who couldn't be here, but are tired of petty politics we see being played at every city council meeting, I take exception with the, all the time the city council is focused on scoring political points surrounding the city renting property to a city employee at Beavis Hill. This started with your claiming that this was about generating revenue for the city. Now it looks like it's increasing the rent by $2,400 annually it will cost the city approximately $400,000 or more to bring up the code, the Porterfield way of raising t revenue. We'd be bankrupt within weeks if you were our mayor. 
I recognize that Councilman Williams is fond of telling everyone he has an MBA, the same council member who was put in charge of the city budget that for the first time in 30 years wasn't adopted on time, and his and your budget would have put us on the fast track to bankruptcy. I may not have an MBA like Mr. Williams as I went to work protecting our city and its citizens as a firefighter, but I know the difference between trying to save taxpayer dollars and perpetuating a political ruse by certain council members bent on creating division, attacking the administration that in the end taxpayers will pay the price for. But the whole rent situation reminded me that you, Ms. Porterfield, rent space from the county. In looking at your rent history, I found that you won't, the only time you paid your rent on time for the past seven years was for the three months in a row during the past mayoral primary, which you lost. I also found your rent hasn't been increased in six years. So if you want to talk about rep responsibilities and costs associated with renting, from either the city or, in your case, the county, going five, six, and sometimes seven months overdue and never paying your rent on time with no penalties for being late is unacceptable by any metric. If this city council is truly looking for ways to generate funds and or just as important saving taxpayer dollars, the city o GOP is willing to help. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Kennedy. Honorable Matt Daly, City Council. Uh, I rise today. My name is Tom Kennedy. I'm the chair of the Republican Party. Uh, it was mid March when the city GOP first, sorry, I got to take these cheaters off. When the city GOP first became aware of the legal dumping that was being done along I 890 West between exit four Michigan Ave and exit five Broadway. We first called upon the city to clean up the areas where the dumping had been occurring. We called attention to the health hazards near the illegal dumps and how these areas were embarrassing sight as it was an entryway into our city. We also identified health and safety concerns for the residents who lived near these illegal dumps. This was the first time that we had mentioned using American Rescue Plan Act funds to address these legal dumps and tackle the conditions they left behind in our city. Over the course of the next two weeks, we attempted to find out the process of how to apply for these ARPA funds. It was during this time that we also introduced, uh, also introduced using these funds for surveillance videoing of the area, fencing, increased lighting to stave off these would-be illegal dumpers. We were advised that we would have to go through the city council to find out the process to apply for ARPA funding. We continue to try to get answers from the city council. Finally, I wrote you, the city council president, a letter to request the process, but instead of you advising me on how to apply for an ARPA proposal, you chose to accuse me and others in the Republican Party of bigotry and personal bias. The city GOP was trying to help Wiley Street residents clean up their neighborhood and find ways to help the city address their concerns while at the same time trying to make our city cleaner and more presentable place to live for everyone. Your message responding to my letter requesting an answer on submitting an art proposal was both shocking, disappointing, and quite honestly, frankly, ma'am, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. But on another note more positive, be advised we have been meeting with the residents of Wiley Street and we have just begun to help these citizens find solutions to their issues. Whether it's with ARPA funds, CBG, or raising funds in other areas, we will get the job done for the Wiley Street residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, some, someone only put their first name, and it looks like Shantis or Stantis. Only a first name, or only one name. I'm not sure if it's the first or the last. Okay. Abdul 
Bug you? No? Okay. Uh, no, so this person, uh, I'm gonna spell this because I'm, I'm not sure. A-D-A-B-D-A-L-R-A-H-M-A-N. And what is your first name? Okay, that's you. So hello everyone, my name is Roa Abdurrahman and I'm here today representing the, un um, the University of Albany chapter of Student for Justice in Palestine. And I'm also here today as a Palestinian Jordanian woman. So being a part of our campus of Student for Justice in Palestine means that my peers and I must set aside our, different, our pride and differences for one common goal, the liberation of the Palestinian people. One of the goals was to pass the BDS um, ceasefire resolution. And on Wednesday, April 3rd, the, our student senate passed that resolution. And one of the main things that we had to argue was that this is a genocide. We all know, standing here, I hope that we know that this is a genocide. With the death toll being over 40,000 plus people, Palestinian people, including children, women, elderly people being murdered every single day. Standing here today, a Palestinian is being murdered at the second right now. So I call for the city council of Schenectady to call for an immediate ceasefire. And also one of the points that was made by the Zionists on campus that also spoke to not get this resolution to pass was that Palestinians are not being murdered, they're dying. How are they dying? You, uh, how are they dying? They're being murdered by the IDF, so they're being bombed. Innocent people are being bombed. Um, and one of the other points was that this is not a fight against the Palestinian residents, this is a fight against Hamas. But the, this point has been brought up a few times in this, um, in, in this meeting, and that was, um, there was a U.S. citizen who was bombed by the Israeli soldiers, including an Australian one. These people do not have a single drop of Palestinian blood in them. They are not Palestinian people. And they still got bombed for being in Palestine to aid Palestinians, to give them humanitarian aid, to be a medical assistance for, for injured Palestinians. Because the medical aid in Palestine, doctors right now are struggling. They do not have the resources. Women do not have the resources for their cycle, for their monthly cycle. Us as women, we are, we are grateful to go stop by CVS, a drugstore, to get pads, to get tampons. They do not have that resource. This is a humanly function thing that women go through every single month, and we all know this. They don't have those resources. Doctors don't know how to deal with, um, with, a, um, with injured people anymore. They're using anything that they can because they do not have those resources. And the people who were trying to give them those resources, they got bombed by the IDF soldiers. So as a Palestinian Jordanian woman, as a Palestinian Jordanian student, as a 17 year old, I am standing here in front of you guys to call for an immediate ceasefire because what is happening is not okay. The U Albany um, Student Senate passing the BDS resolution is not enough. It's not enough. This is the and we and ho, inshallah we are also not the first, uh, not the only school that passes their, their resolution. But what we are doing is not enough. W me standing here is not enough. With the United States, Israel needs to uh, call for a ceasefire, and they're not doing that. So, as as a resident of Latham, New York, I am standing here to call for a cease. Um, to um, please understand to call for a ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. Jedaya Pacheco. Oh, here it comes. Say your name, please. Hello, my name is Jedaya Pacheco. Um, journalist Bassan once said, the will of the people cannot fail. If we can't shape the world we live in, if we cannot stop a genocide, so miserable is our life. I am an exhausted but persistent organizer in many capacities for the UAlbany community. I used to understand the sentiment that we are far away from the atrocities and brutal attacks on the people in the West Bank and Gaza. 
but I recall a video I once saw of a little girl who had said that she is the last surviving girl in her elementary school. I think back to another girl my age who said before the occupation she was studying in university. I will bring my emotions to a very small part of my identity because I have many identities. I can talk about how this occupation has not only inflicted a genocide but an ecocide, how the land will take generations to even start healing. I can talk about how women in Palestine are giving birth without proper C-section materials, dying in the process, or how women, if any aid reaches them at all, are not given the proper sanitary products they need. There are so many intersections, but the disruption of education, the very thing we all should recognize as a human right, is what has been keeping me up at night. More than the projects that are due past, past due in school, more than that final that I have coming up, it's all very minuscule to me, although I should be glad that these are where my stresses end as a student. I want to remind this body that there are no universities left in Gaza. That at the very least, as lovers of education, understanders that knowledge is power, this, the very thing that brought you to this role that you are sitting in, today, that you must move to action. That education is the greatest gift a person can have, and our systems have partnerships with occupied Palestine, who are fa facilitating terror. We've seen it, we have watched it, and the people of Palestine are watching us watch them. I call you to take lead as adults on passing a permanent ceasefire resolution and not to say, to say not on wa our watch. We must agree at the very least, just, we, we must agree on this at the very least. Just last week, my school, UAlbany, was the first Sunni school Senate to pass a ceasefire resolution. If the students saw, the, saw this call to action, Schenectady can, can do it too. It is possible, we are not powerless, and I need you all to believe and understand in your power. I stand here today to call for a resolution to pass and for this body to stand unshakably besides the oppressed people of the world. If not for anything else, then for the love of education. You cannot let yourself sit in these seats and that with the education that brought you all here and allow this to continue. We cannot accept that we, we have to take care of our own house first because our struggles are all connected. And if we fail Gaza, we will fail ourselves because what, are we really free people if we cannot do everything we can? I go, I'll go back to my campus dorm tonight, open my laptop in the dark, and try to do assignments while forces have destroyed this experience for Palestinian students. Palestine has called on us, the U Albany students, to pick up the call. So pick up the call. We will not be bystanders. We should all do everything we can, and we should all feel empty because of this fact. Shame on us if we do not speak, and shame on you if you do not proceed with tangible action. Thank you. Thank you. Maribel? If you could state your last name because it's not legible. Sorry. My name is Mirabel Stantler. I am a student organizer at UAlbany. I am Jewish, and I grew up learning that every person is an entire world. There's a Jewish teaching that anyone who saves a life saves an entire world, and whoever destroys a single soul destroys an entire world. And the Zionist, fascist, pariah state of Israel, using the false cover of Judaism, has destroyed more than 41,496 worlds by murdering more than 41,496 Palestinians. I unequivocally reject any assertion that calling for a ceasefire or demanding liberation for the Palestinian people is anti-Semitic. I emphatically reaffirm that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, and that the illegitimate state of Israel is not to be conflated with the Jewish diaspora or Judaism. I understand that Zionism, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia are manifestations of white supremacy and colonialism. All of our oppressions are interconnected, and true liberation is dependent on fighting white supremacy in all its forms. Because of this, I am moved to action. One part of that meant organizing for months to get our student government to pass the historic resolution demanding that UAlbany and SUNY divest from genocide and call for a ceasefire. This resolution passed last Wednesday, making UAlbany the first but not the last SUNY to demand divestment. The students united will never be defeated, which is why we knew we would not fail. As students, we understand our unique obligation as individuals in the belly of the beast to use our privilege to ensure our universities and the institutions we are a part of not be complicit in genocide, apartheid, and colonization. 
And the people united will never be defeated, which is why Schenectady must pass a ceasefire resolution. As our, your, and my tax dollars continue to fund the Zionist entity that is actively starving the people of Gaza and paying for the weapons that are murdering Palestinians daily, demanding a ceasefire and the unimpeded entry of aid to Gaza in every way you can is the absolute least you can do. None of us can ever be doing enough as we simultaneously fund a genocide, but we must try to do as much as we can. It is shameful that the UAlbany student government has shown more courage and steadfastness in their commitment to humanity and morality than, the body of this, than this body of elected officials. You all have tangible power, and if you are not brave enough to use it, you have failed as an institution and as individuals. I would expect that you all share in this ob obligation to humanity and are moved to action. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Hubert. My name is Rod Hubert. I'd like to address the council. Good evening. Um, I'm not going to be up here and be negative and uh, attack the members. That's just not the right thing to do. We're here to discuss city business. I feel bad that everything has happened, but that this is what we got to do. Well, anyways, I, uh, Carl Williams has helped me with the potholes. He's called me and gotten in touch with me, and today uh, there was somebody on my street actually patching the holes. So we're, we're going the right way, you know? And uh, I'm very grateful. The next thing I think each council member should pick a project in the city. Clean up the park, clean up uh, Crane Street, other things, but uh, I finally got somebody to help me. Okay, good seeing you, and uh, we'll keep going. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. And the last is <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Insath. Good evening and thank you for allowing me to speak on this unparalleled human tragedy of our times. And thank you uh, for allowing me to speak with the confusion in the sign up. Um, we are asking you to adopt a resolution supporting ceasefire in Gaza. I'm an epidemiologist and a public health worker. My research area is health disparities, but I come to you as a mother, as a fellow human being beyond race and religion. I come to speak because I need to be able to look my kids in, my, in their eyes and say that I was not quiet. I need to be true to my profession and speak against injustice and racism everywhere. Because today being silent is being complicit. You say why here? What does this tragedy unfolding have to do with us? The reason is our tax dollars. They fund the weapons being used against children, against aid convoys, against hospitals. Our tax dollars that could be put to much better use in communities like Schenectady, providing healthcare access, after school programs, eliminating food deserts, building conditions, things we've heard tonight, funding Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security. I come here because you are our representatives and you have public platforms available to you to speak up and speak out. I will speak up here, I will call my federal representatives and I will talk to anyone who listens. And we ask that you do as well. What we are seeing unfolding is an annihilation of a people. Israel launched the war immediately after October 7 terror attacks by Hamas. At that time, the Israeli government said the operation had two goals, eliminating Hamas and bringing back hostages taken by the militants to Gaza. Over 1.7 million people in Gaza have been displaced since October 7. Over 33,000 civilians have been killed. Of them, 40% are children, 25% are women. At least 200 medics and more than 135 UN staff have been killed. Hospitals, doctors, aid workers, journalists are all specific targets. None of these dead could be possibly called combatants. How much collateral damage justifies killing so many children? Why is the scale of this oppression so disproportionate that makes thousands of children orphans? 
the WHO has issued dire warnings that the threat of epidemics as displaced Palestinians are crowded together in tents and makeshift shelters without sanitation facilities and clean water. There are conditions of starvation and famine unfolding before our eyes. The WHO has called for orders of protection of humanitarian personnel following detentions of medical personnel at checkpoints. When did we become a nation that stays quiet as children are killed and starved? When did we start looking the other way when clearly marked aid convoys that were being coordinated with Israeli military are specifically targeted and blown to smithereens? Where is your outrage? Where is the accountability for public servants? Where are the rules of war and engagement? You want me to condemn violence? Here, I condemn all violence. Can we all just stand for humanity, for our children, for those that have been subject to systemic racism here and in the world? We want you to take up this resolution on our behalf. There are no two sides to humanism. Cease fire now and cease fire for the sake of humanity. Please pass this resolution, please adopt it. Thank you. I have no one else signed up to speak for the public comment of city business, so I declare this public comment closed. At this point in time, miscellaneous business of the council. I called all the names that were on the sheet. At this time, any miscellaneous business of the council? Uh, the mayor is not here, as we can all see, and so Matt Daly is sitting for, in for the mayor this evening. Mr. Daly? Okay, yeah, yeah. So the mayor has asked me to sit in, in for him tonight, which is an absolute pleasure for me, and uh, I see the temperature in the room is a little bit high at, at the moment, and so uh, my name is Matt Daly. I am the golf professional at Schenectady Municipal Golf Course. And I can't tell you about world issues, but I can tell you that I can bring uh, a lot of people in our community some joy if you would come up to our facility and, and, and see what we have to offer. Uh, tomorrow we're going to open the golf course for the season. Uh, Mayor McCarthy traditionally opens the golf course uh, against a um, sitting member of the Schenectady High School golf team. Uh, there's a little competition that they have done over the years and the American Red Cross, including the Schenectady Fire Department, will be on hand to sort of educate us on uh, the importance of smoke detection in people's houses, and there's a great program that they have. We run a raffle for the American Red Cross, and all of the proceeds that we raise go directly back to them, in which case we'll be back in a few months to present that uh, to uh, the Red Cross in front of all of you. Um, but. Uh, I certainly hope that you take the opportunity because it is a public golf course and it is open to not just uh, the city residents but non-residents alike and it is a very incredible benefit if you are a city resident to come up there and uh, the door is always open and we hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daly. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. I've uh, heard, heard some very impassioned speeches and um, concerns and and I don't I you know I heard some things said but I believe that we all are believe in, in humanitarian aid and we all believe that there should be no violence against everyone so as I stated before and I'll state again I'm always open to that conversation so send emails and I'm just waiting for for someone to say yes we'd like to sit down and talk I only speak for myself I cannot speak for other council members it's up to other council members if they all want to engage in conversation. I would hope that we would want to, because without communication, then we really cannot understand what, um, what everyone wants to say. And, and the communication needs to be a dialogue. As you come here, you get to speak to us, but we do not get to speak in return. That's just the way the process is here. But again, I'm open, for, open to dialogue too with anyone who was, um, Dr. Shakima initially sent that email. I'm still open to that. I just want to say that. I'm also, I'd like to thank the children for coming tonight. That was, it was very nice to hear them. I appreciate uh, Dr. Isak for uh, asking for them to come and it's always great to hear um, from, from children always, but also to hear of all the cultures that represent our city. Uh, I want to thank the firefighters for their uh, Cancer Foundation run this week, uh, uh, this weekend, and I had an opportunity to uh, to be with them actually was not it was past this last weekend before and it was very cold yet 
you know, people were out supporting the Cancer Foundation, so I want to thank everyone that came out. Um, just want to remind folks that, first of all, there was one thing that was said in, in terms of city council versus administrative. The city council is not the body which you submit in, uh, requests for, for funding. That is an administrative function. The city council is a legislative body, so we then decide once it's gone through the administration if that funding then gets um, delivered. So just to clear, what there was a speaker who said that they submitted something to the city council. It does not get submitted to us. It gets submitted to the administration. And this coming weekend, uh, excuse me, the 27th, there's going to be cleanups. We've been talking a lot about the cleanup of the city. You heard a little bit about it tonight. Um, on the 27th, the north side will be having a cleanup as well as Hamilton Hill. On the north side, uh, you, it's probably on the city's webpage by this time, but Mike Aragosa, you can reach out to him. And in Hamilton Hill, you can reach out to the Dury uh, Amy Zion Church. And also the Vail community on the um, 22nd of March is also there doing their cleanup. So if there are other neighborhoods who are interested in organizing a cleanup on the 27th or the 22nd, but on the 27th, there are a lot of communities will be doing cleanup. So I just want to let people know that. Hopefully people will join in. We do have a little bit of work to do in terms of our uh, cleaning up our city. If nothing else, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Ms. Patrick, second by Mr. Mancini. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Have a good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs>